my practice, the most common area is the face, including cheeks, the eyelids, and the uh, temple area. I also inject fat into the hands to make them look more youthful. And in the breast, it's usually as an adjunct that we have done a breast lift or breast augmentation, and the patient still needs a little fullness in the area above the nipple. We fat graft that, and very rarely do I do the procedure that is now known as the Brazilian butt lift, where a large volume of fat is transferred and grafted to the buttock areas. But basically in my practice, it's mostly the face and eyelids. First, the fat has to be harvested. And depending where we are planning to graft the fat, the harvesting method is different. For the eyelids and the face, we use tiny little cannulas or tubes to remove the fat. For areas such as the breast and buttocks, that tube is much larger. So that's the first step. The second step is that the fat has to be prepared. Generally for the face, we use a little sieve so that the supernatant fluid is drained and the fat itself is left for grafting. That fat we call microfat. Microfat can then be processed even more by squeezing it in between two syringes so that it becomes more like a thin cream. The nano fat is best for around the eyelids, best for placing right under the skin because it has the ability to improve the quality of the skin. That's a very good question and the most challenging part of fat grafting now is to be able to predict how much of the grafted fat will take. And I have to say that the art of fat grafting is now way ahead of the science in terms of how much do we inject, how much of it will be retained. We all do overcorrect by a certain amount. And because it's so much easier and more convenient to go and regraft than it is to remove overgrafted fat, I tend to err on the side of overcorrecting by a very small amount, let's say 20 to 30 percent, knowing that not all the grafted fat will take. With experience, uh, the surgeon will know that in his or her hands, how much of that fat will survive so that it's less likely that we would have to take a patient back a second time for regrafting.